Out of boredom, I decided to make a community post last month asking you guys who you believe to be the role with the most crybabies. And though I was expecting there to be a clear winner, I wasn't expecting it to be that clear of a winner. Over three quarters of all votes went towards the AD carry role, meaning there were twice the number of votes for ADC than the other four roles combined. Hardly a surprise if you think about it, no matter what your stance is on your own position, it's unanimously agreed upon that ADC, now referred to as bot lane, has this uncanny property of turning anyone who subscribes to it into an entitled brat with a crippling case of anime main character syndrome. In fact, it's so pervasive that anecdotally, whenever I get autofilled ADC, my support cries tears of joy when I don't immediately complain about dying early game or being weak sided. Everyone has their own explanation on why the bot lane is a hotbed for the worst kind of behavior imaginable, but I thought it would make for a thought-provoking video to go over the gameplay factors and design elements of the role that has such a consistent psychological effect among its players. For today, we'll be discussing the problem with AD Carry and why everyone there suffers from anime main character syndrome. The best way to go about this is by breaking down the causality behind all of this, the chain of events and circumstances that led to ADC fostering this me against the world mentality. The formation of top jungle mid ADC and support was not merely just a coincidental occurrence, it was intentional, however gradual it was. Despite the rift being symmetrical in nature, there's a distinction between the three lanes and the roles that go with them. Back in the old days, champion variety was significantly lower than it is now. Lack of resources and more difficult monster camps restricted jungling only to a select few, and even as more support and development was given to that role, the jungle was still too hostile for most carry champions to be fielded there. Likewise, in top lane, when champions having more simplistic designs along with there being little, if anything, of importance prior to Baron, top lane was mostly an AFK farm lane, and so tanks and bruisers were the dominant class. Realistically, since you weren't expected to get that much golden experience from CSing or kills, you had to play top laners that were fine with chilling for a long time. The high TPS on V9 champs of today were not as abundant back then. For example, the average game today observes top laners usually being 2 if not 3 levels above bot lane on account of the more generous experience distribution up there. Then of course you have stuff like tower plates and rift herald, more ways to push your advantage through solo kills. Down in support, not only did champions like Pike and Senna not even exist back then, but gold generation and item selection were also significantly worse. Supports would have to waste an entire item slot to buy Sightstone rather than the support item evolving into giving wards on their own. So realistically, you could only get away with playing actual supports like Thresh, Alistar, Janna, and such. With the champion pulls of top, jungle, mid, and support being more constrained, that left mid and bot lane to serve as a muscle for the team. Min lane's more open-ended auxiliary nature allowed for the role to function as pretty much anything. You could have conventional DPS champs like Anivia, Ryze, Victor, Orianna, Azir, or you could play someone more macro-oriented like Twisted Fate. Ultimately, this left us with the bot lane role, reserved with the primary and only purpose of being the damage dealer. That's kind of your crash course on how the ADC role came to be. Back in the years of Season 3, 4, 5, and whatnot, most of your team's damage was on the shoulders of the AD carry, which is how it earned its moniker, Attack Damage Carry. Subsequently, the Marksman class, known for their extreme DPS, was almost exclusively shuttled into that position. Now, why Marksman specifically? For three reasons. One, their damage is always assured. While there are mages capable of outputting extreme amounts of damage, with some potentially surpassing Marksman, with most if not all of them relying on mana for this, unless they have an endless supply of blue buffs, they will eventually gas out, whereas even a manaless Caitlyn can still get some big auto attacks in. Two, their scaling is more exponential. When you picture most AP champions, their damage can only scale in one way, ability power. Same goes for AD casters. Attack damage is really the only way they can get stronger. Marksmen have three or sometimes four ways in which they can get stronger. AD of course, then attack speed increasing the frequency of that attack damage being applied, then crit damage increasing the strength of that attack damage being applied, and for some marksmen, on hit effects. Again, there are mages with DPS that can more than exceed marksmen, but theoretically, assuming they're given the opportunity, Jinx, Kogma, Samira, Misfortune, Zeri, Kai'Sa, Twitch, they're intended to be the most damaging champions in the game as six items. Finally, 3. Range. Though not as relevant now what with all the dashes and blinks everyone has, back in the day, the range advantage afforded by marksmen along with the implied protection from their team made them the most consistent at dealing damage, since a melee champion would not always be within striking distance, and mages were usually countered by tanks who could soak up their abilities, whereas marksmen could shred through them. With the primary early to mid game objective of Dragon being situated between mid and bot lane, it made sense for Marksman to be fielded down there, since their pressure could be exerted on critical points of the map as opposed to if they were in top lane, they wouldn't be able to. These early circumstances are what eventually began the trend of ADCs becoming the instrument of a team's success or failure. The outcome of the game hinged on how strong your ADC was compared to the enemies, and was the reason why pro players like Uzi, Doublelift, Bang, Reckless, and Deft were so high profile in their prime time. That's just how things are, the AD carry was the king of the chessboard, you had to protect your king while taking down the enemy team's king. I know that's not the most appropriate analogy given that the queen does all the muscle work but you get the idea. Fast forward to the modern day and the significance of the ADC role has diminished considerably. 
Now, every single role has evolved and expanded to feature an abundance of carry champions. Up in top lane, among many others, you have the infamous Four Horsewomen, Jax, Gwen, Cassante, Aatrox, Gangplank, so many picks with immense potential damage output. The jungle has pulled in almost complete 180. Once being a role where really only tanks and bruisers could thrive, its most popular and successful champions are high DPS, high burst attackers. Rengar, Kindred, Evelyn, Kane, Belveth, Karthus, Hecarim, Graze, and so on. In fact, outside of very tank-oriented metas, trying to find a tank jungler is exceedingly rare in this day and age. The mid lane has also greatly expanded on damage dealers, and lastly support has been given new picks that could potentially outcarry their own ADC. In an effort to breathe more player agency, namely in solo queue, all five roles are given the opportunity to carry games with these 1v9 champions, rendering what once made ADC so valuable and distinguished into a ubiquitous, commonplace thing. So how has this negatively impacted the bot lane role? What is wrong with top jungle mid and support having more carry agency? Nothing. At least, it should be nothing. But how this escalated the degeneration of bot lane and by extension its players were four works. You have one job. While the other four roles have gone through waves of changes, adjustments, and transformations, the bot lane role has kept stagnant. To this day, it is still the role known to field marksmen and is still expected to provide ample amounts of DPS in the mid to late game. They still only have one job. They're still expected to pick a ranged champion with high late game pressure. Yes, there do exist edge cases where you can run like Yasuo Rel or Tom Kench Fasting Senna or stuff like that, but for the most part, players are still expected to pick a marksman and are still implicitly expected to carry the game. Why that's a problem is that this very sentiment does not take into account the substantial increase in difficulty of doing so. Long ago, AD carries were only really in competition with their mid laners in regards to being the muscle for the team. Now, however, they have to compete with every single role for damage, raising the standard on what's an acceptable performance. The thing is, the class is intrinsically meant to be protected and supplied. To offset the devastating late game pressure, marksmen are disqualified from most of the self-sustaining tools granted to other classes. They have less armor, less magic assist, less movement speed, less max health, and any semblance of defensive utility they're allowed to have is limited in what it can do. Caitlyn's 90 caliber net may be a decent get off me tool as it pushes her back while slowing down whoever the projectile tags onto, but compared to a defensive ability like Pantheon's Aegis Assault which can theoretically mitigate trillions of damage or Yasuo's Windwall which can also do the same, Surfer's Spell Shield or Draven's Stand Aside are nowhere near as consequential. Furthermore, having four different parameters in which they can grow stronger, AD carries are balanced accordingly in that they need to spec into all four parameters, or at least three. Marksmen don't simply have the choice to build any of the four DPS stats. They're required to, meaning traditionally, they cannot build defensive items, lest they miss out on a ton of damage. And even if they do choose to build defensive items, said components are nerfed on ranged champions, rendering them suboptimal for them. So they have no choice but to build items that while high reward are still high risk. Meanwhile, other classes could build items that give health, armor, magic assist, and whatnot in addition to their offensive stats. So while you have carry champs in top, jungle, mid, and support who can start myrtleizing everyone with two items or sometimes even one, marksmen still require about three or sometimes four items to really get going, during which they're expected to, somehow, keep pace with everyone else in pressure, despite not being capable of 1v9ing that early. It's an arms race with the deck stacked against the marksmen, especially considering they need to be supported and protected to deal damage, while top jungle and mid carries can solo the game with or without the help of their team. The loss of significance in their role consequently reduces the amount of agency they have. While every other role has carry potential, they can default to other jobs if circumstances don't give them the opportunity to carry. Let's say you're playing Kha'Zix and you had a rough early game. You're still the jungler, the team still needs you to secure objectives. You're playing Fiora top and you ran your ass down? Well, you can still draw pressure by slow pushing into oblivion. If your team can hold out long enough for you to sneak in hips and stuff, then congrats, you're still a threat to the enemy team. If you play a tank and you fell behind, you're still a tank. Your crowd control and durability are still useful in supporting your team. But what is a marksman if not just damage? Unless their name is Ash or Varus, they carry nothing of import. They're just a body. If, say, you got counterpicked as Orn, it's all good. You still have a teamfight ultimate and you can still power up items for your case. If you went 0 and 3 on Jinx, you're f***ing useless. Die, step on a Lego, delete System 32 in real life, and your legacy. That's the issue. Marksmen have nothing else. They're just damage. That's their entire identity and the entirety of the bot lane role. All you are is just damage. So if the role, whose only purpose is DPS, falls behind in terms of DPS, what good are they? Nothing. Back when most of the time the DPS fell onto your AD carry and mid laner, whether your team liked it or not, they had to help them as best they could to catch up. Otherwise, they had no damage. Presently, if your Tristana falls behind, no one gives a sh because you have Aatrox top, Graves jungle, and Vex mid. You still have plenty of damage on your team. What sucks is that despite the game having more damage and carry champions than ever before, as mentioned earlier, ADC is still viewed as that role that needs to be shut down. Dragon is still an important objective in the early game, and with bot tower having less durability than top and mid, in addition to there being two champs to kill, bot lane is still the frequent target of being four-man ganked. 
it can be extremely frustrating to play a champion that starts the game more vulnerable than any other, takes longer to scale than most others, and gets assaulted the most out of any other. Yet societally, they're still expected to 1v9 the game since what other purpose do they serve? In a way, ADC is a very thankless role. If you win lane and destroy everyone, then you did your job, you were expected to. You didn't do anything special, you just did what you were obligated to do. If you fall behind though, GG FF15 bot gap report driven inting. So how can a marksman overcome all of these factors pushing against them by being the main focus of the game, by having everything given to them and supplied to them just like it used to be in the past? Only because of the nature of solo queue, people don't trust anyone as far as they can throw them and pick champions that can do the carrying themselves. But marksmen, by definition, by framework, by foundation, by design, can only succeed off the trust and confidence of their team. You see those godlike moments in pro play like TSM vs Cloud9 double smoking everyone on Lucian, it's because he had three tanks in front of him literally giving their lives to protect him because they trust that he will pull through and carry them, and he did. That is why so many ADC players have anime main character syndrome. The environment in which they play and the champions they play force them into this mindset because that's the only way they will have any agency in this game. To this day, they are still targeted non-stop in the early game, still ganked non-stop, still one-shotted by the enemy talent non-stop, still being prioritized as if they're public enemy number one, but there's no longer a reason or incentive for the team to protect and support them since they can now do it on their own, leaving the AD carry to fend for themselves or often be used as a walking decoy. The roles have been reversed. It used to be the team taking the L so the ADC could win them the W, now it feels more like the ADC taking the L so the team could win the ADC the W. It's a vicious cycle. The only value of a marksman comes from how hard they carry fights of their damage, but not only do they require more items to reach their power spike, but they have to with their vulnerable early game fend against an increasingly more hostile and threatening enemy team compared to the past so their only main enemy was usually the other team's ADC. Then when they obviously fall behind, they have nothing to fall back on besides their meager damage, which makes them an easy target for blame from their team in the mid to late game, which leads to frustration from lack of agency in that no matter how good they are as a player, they simply just weren't given the chance in light of being 4 man ganked early game, then all throughout mid game they get asked by the enemy assassin or diver, thus making them believe the only way they can actually perform is if they get early help and attention. And so when they don't get it, they get frustrated and lash out, which then makes their team neglect them even more, which makes them progressively more desperate for the help and attention. It's a continuous feedback loop. Even though, as the top main, I wholeheartedly champion that top lane has the least agency of the 5 roles in concept, I kinda feel bad for ADC players. If the top lane gets screwed from being counterpicked or neglected, most of the time the team's indifferent to it since who cares, it's top lane. But if you fall behind as the ADC, even if you did everything in your power to stop the bleeding, it is still your fault. It's your fault if you got 4 men ganked. It's your fault if the enemy Rengar one-shots you all game. It's your fault if you get out damaged by the Yone even though he gets 100% crit chance in 2 items while you need 5. It's always your fault. So while it doesn't justify their behavior, it at least explains where it came from. When you're constantly being told you're the reason your team loses the game, then players will naturally believe the opposite can happen too. If you're the reason your team loses the game, then surely you must be the reason your team wins the game, right? Whether or not it's true, that is the reality of the current state of bot lane. It is a tough situation for sure. The world around bot lane has drastically changed while they're still expected to adhere to standards from back then that are no longer possible to consistently meet now. And with everyone constantly yelling at them and blaming them despite having little if any agency in the early game, to repeat, it doesn't excuse them from lashing out but I do sympathize with them for how frustrating it must be. Or who knows, maybe I'm just being too nice and giving them the benefit of doubt and maybe they're just a bunch of whiny brats whose parents never said no to them, but I'd like to have some faith in humanity that maybe they're not evil, just misunderstood. What do you guys think? Do you agree with my stance on this? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at VarsVam, join my Discord server, and why not check out my video on the problem with top lane if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.